So we've reformulated the second law in terms of a chemical reaction system only, and what has emerged is a new state function known as Gibbs free energy. We saw that at constant pressure and temperature, delta H minus T delta S is equal to the total change in this new state function G, which is the Gibbs free energy. G itself is defined as H minus TS, and if we take H enthalpy and blow it up into its definition as U plus PV, we get that G is equal to the internal energy plus, plus pressure times volume minus the temperature times the entropy. We can then write the second law as delta H minus T delta S, which is equal to delta G, must be less than or equal to zero for any spontaneous allowed chemical process. The beauty and power of this inequality is that it shows how both enthalpy and entropy play into spontaneity for a chemical process. Delta G is less than or equal to zero is the fundamental criterion. What that means is delta H less than zero is good, since delta H and delta G are sort of directly related like this. Delta S less than zero, however, is bad since we're subtracting delta S within this expression for delta G. So delta S positive is good, delta S negative is bad, delta H negative is good, and delta H positive is bad for spontaneity. We'll look at this in a little more detail in a second, but ultimately, spontaneity for a chemical process is encouraged by two different things. Decreasing enthalpy, delta H less than zero, and increasing entropy, delta S is greater than zero. Let's organize this a little bit better. Think about how the signs of delta H and delta S are related to spontaneity. And think about the role in particular of temperature, which we haven't really touched on yet. Well, if delta H is negative and delta S is positive, that means that delta H minus T delta S is necessarily less than zero, right? Since delta H is less than zero and delta S is greater than zero, making this entire term negative. In that case, no matter what the temperature is, the process is always spontaneous since delta G is always less than zero, no matter the temperature. The opposite situation occurs when delta H is positive and delta S is negative. In that case, delta H is positive, and with delta S negative, the negative T delta S term becomes positive as well, and so in that case, necessarily, delta G must be greater than zero. That means in this case that the process is non-spontaneous at any temperature. When delta S is negative, that is when energy is becoming more concentrated within the system and the enthalpy change is positive. Such chemical processes are never spontaneous, no matter the temperature. Where things get interesting is when we have, for example, delta H greater than zero and delta S greater than zero as well. Now, the spontaneity depends on temperature, because even though delta H is greater than zero, minus T delta S may be negative enough to overwhelm the positive enthalpy change. Since delta S is what it is, the way to influence that is to change the temperature. At higher temperatures, we end up getting delta G is less than zero, since this negative term of the delta G expression becomes overwhelming. Similarly, if we have a negative delta H and a negative delta S, spontaneity depends on temperature. Delta H is favorable. Enthalpy is released. The enthalpy change is less than zero. But minus T delta S is unfavorable. This is going to be a positive term since delta S is negative. However, provided the temperature is low enough now, delta G may still be lower than zero as long as the positive T delta S term does not overwhelm the negative enthalpy term. So what we can ultimately say is that a process is spontaneous only if the energy released due to enthalpy, which is delta H, is greater than the energy concentrated within the system, T delta S, or vice versa. If delta H is greater than zero and energy absorption is involved in the process, that energy absorption must be less than the energy dispersed within the system. And as temperature increases, the importance of the entropy change increases as well. That is, it becomes more essential that the process cause energy dispersal and that delta S be greater than zero. Eventually, even if delta H is negative, there will come a point at which T delta S is going to overwhelm delta H if delta S is negative as well, for example. As the temperature goes up, the importance of entropy grows as well, and this is an important broad conceptual point of chemical thermodynamics. At higher temperatures, entropy change is more important to the spontaneity of a chemical process.
as temperature decreases, the opposite holds true. The importance of entropy change diminishes, and it becomes more important that the process causes a decrease in enthalpy, that is, that delta H is less than zero. This occurs, for example, when bonds form, when intramolecular forces are created, when phases condense from, say, gas to liquid or liquid to solid. These are all processes that involve delta H less than zero.